Okay, detectives, tomorrow is Easter. That means it's been almost an entire year since Cottontail's so-called Easter egg hunt took place. And what do we got? Nothing. Nothing. After a year of searching, after all the Easter baskets and all those painted skulls, nothing. Zip. Nada. Noodle Lama Dama. Nothing. And what's worse? What's worse is the word on the street is Cottontail is planning another hunt, which means this whole damn thing might be starting again. This can't happen. Whatever you two have to do to prevent this hunt from happening, if it is in fact happening at all, you need to do it now. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Anything? Nothing, as usual. Figures. The rabbit's more elusive than a comic book villain. We don't even know how deep the scan of his really goes. He could have followers everywhere. You're talking about his other rabbits? His cronies? What are they called again? Honey bunnies, I think. But that's all third and fourth party information. He's obviously hidden behind layers and layers of protection. Right. Whoever his followers are, they worship him. No wonder our investigation has been stalled over the past year. Too many safeguards. So what do you want to do? You heard the captain. Forget about him. He's only breathing down our necks because he knows that if Cottontail executes another one of his Easter egg hunts, his reputation is at stake and his aspirations for higher office is in jeopardy. What about the mayor? The mayor can kiss my ass. The mayor and the captain are one and the same. All they care about is how the public perceives them. They couldn't give a shit less about what happens. Speaking of which, I may have something, not much. Hold on. Yes, here, it's from HIV Venny. It was sent to me about 10 minutes ago. HIV Vinny. Hmm. Word on the street is the shit's going down tomorrow. Don't know the time, don't know the place, but everybody's saying the Blue Brothers are involved. Five contestants, all from Spring Hill. That's all I know. So, so shit. Wanna head over to Angel City? Talk to Vinny in person? No. Cops are moving targets over there. Especially from Spring Hill. We're not dressed in blues. How are they gonna know we're cops? I don't care. We aren't taking that chance. And I don't want you going there anymore either. Rhodes, I know that city like- I don't care, Graham. It's too dangerous. If your guys can't text you, great. If not, Forget about them. We're Spring Hill Beach. Angel City's not our problem. Even if it pertains to the Cottontail case? Rhodes, what are we doing? I don't know, Graham. I don't know. But no matter what we do over the next few hours, one thing is for certain. Cottontail's Easter egg hunt, it's on.
That badass footage you just watched, that was from last year's Easter egg hunt. My second annual Easter egg hunt, as I like to call it. Didn't I look fantastic? I mean, weren't the honey buddies just extravagant? Oh, and uh, did you like my Easter egg grenades? They were awesome. Anyway, it's a whole new year, and the spring is in full effect once again. But who am I, you ask? They call me Cottontail. And Easter is almost here. I'm currently dining on my favorite meal of the week. My delicious standard all-American Friday morning breakfast. Scrambled eggs, bacon, hash browns, toast, and a nice tall glass of fresh squeezed orange juice to wash it all down. I'm not one to eat this kind of food on a regular basis as I try to maintain a fairly healthy lifestyle. So on these pleasant Friday mornings, I indulge just a bit. Actually, this is the first time I've gotten to enjoy the meal at the new place, which makes it even more special. And speaking of new place, it's pretty nice. A little slice of paradise, don't you think? An acre of land across the street, pool in the backyard, a dock, and a boat lift. I love it here. And just look at that view. Places like this around here are hard to come by. So I was lucky enough to find owners who just wanted to get rid of the damn thing as fast as they could. It belonged to the Sirocco siblings. Remember them? They were the survivors of the infamous Deer Park rampage last year. And after leasing the house out to their cop buddies earlier this month during the eight ball conflict and the alleged Charlie Graves resurgence that followed, I guess they finally decided it was time to ditch the property for good. And guess who their first potential buyer was? Yep, you guessed it, yours truly. Made them an offer they just couldn't turn down. And then they split. Nice kids, the pair of them. Too bad it was such a tragedy that turned them into local celebrities, though. Part of me is jealous to encounter a person like Charlie Graves and live to tell the tale. How delicious of a concept that is. getting started a little bit earlier today. Yeah, 50-50. For all we know, there may not be a hunt this year. I wish, I wish I could believe there wouldn't be a hunt this year. But I know the rabbit's gonna have his hunt. together. That sounds great. All right. I'll see you at the station. I like to maintain a dedicated and consistent schedule for exercise. I'm very concerned about keeping myself healthy. So as far as I'm concerned, the schedule runs seven days a week without exception, especially with days like today where I've indulged in my special Friday breakfast. Burning off that disgusting excess takes precedent. Plus, with Easter only a day away, I'm squeezing in as much extra cardio as possible. 
as you can imagine, that's what comes into play the most when I'm out there hunting. You have no idea how excited I am right now. Easter is the time, and it's my day, and I must be ready. I got so excited talking about the Easter hunt that I just had to put my real face on. At least until I finish my routine, that is. I just... I get sick of pretending to be someone I'm not every day of the year, that sometimes I must relieve myself of that ridiculous skin suit and let Cottontail take the front seat. I truly believe that masks allow us to be who we really are. There's just something liberating about putting on a mask on top of your own and allowing the creature inside to come out and play. <laughs> You're probably thinking, what the hell is wrong with this guy, right? It's okay, you can admit it. I imagine from outside looking in, I probably look like some kind of freak. But I like to think I've just connected with my inner self in ways normal people can only dream of. The truth is, there's nothing wrong with me. This is just the way I am. People tend to assume that there's always some kind of outside force that causes somebody like me to turn into, well, someone like me. I disagree. Nothing shaped me. I didn't fall into a vat of chemicals and come out a bleached skin psychopath with some sudden urge to kill. No, I was simply born this way and I am beautiful. Mm, the strangest life I've ever known. Now, I know that this isn't necessarily the kind of case you two enjoy being stuck with each season, but if I may use two terribly obnoxious metaphors in a row, you not only know the drill, but that's also just the way the cookie crumbles. Now, I know that Easter is only two days away and that we still have nothing to work with. But in my humble opinion, we need to treat this as a sure thing. Cottontail's third hunt is going to happen. Picking up what I'm putting down. I mean, come on. We've got no evidence other than a pile of painted skulls. We have no idea where the bodies that go with them are. We have no leads, no survivors, and nothing to go off of. After two seasons, we have nothing. Zip. Jack, bibbity bobbity baba boom nada, nothing. You feel me? Now, I don't care what you have to do to stop this cottontail fellow. Just do it and do it ASAP. Sunday is fast approaching people and the mayor's already breathing down my neck. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Come on, Rhodes, don't make me beg. Captain, can we not do this every time? Can you dig it? Captain! Can you dig it? Sir, yes sir, I can dig it, sir. Good. We moved around a lot growing up. My mom, my little brother and I, usually from one shithole to the next. Not to say it was all bad. There was a handful of decent places sprinkled in there every now and again, but the shit drastically outweighed the gravy. With that said, I don't want to give you the impression that I came from a terribly broken home, but let's just say that times were really, really rough for a really long time. Luckily, my grandparents were always there to help us out, but I don't think even they knew how bad things were. Frankly, I think my mom did a pretty good job of keeping it from them. I was lucky enough to be able to move into my grandparents' house when I was 17, and I tell you, that was a welcome change of pace. Stability, peace, and quiet, an actual grasp on the feeling of what it means to feel safe in your own home, words just can't describe it. The only thing I regret about moving out when I did was leaving my little brother behind. 
I'd been there literally his entire life, and suddenly I wasn't. You see, he's autistic. Now, I think I was one of the only real positive constants in his life that he could count on. And I think I let him down when I left. When it had always been both him and I, he was now forced to deal with everything going on at home by himself. And I'm never going to be able to forgive myself for that. Even worse, for the last 10 years I've been slowly but steadily losing touch with both my mom and my little brother. I mean, it's not like I purposely drove them away, it's just... It seems like the further away we get from the point where I moved out, the more we seem to drift apart. Plus, when you consider the fact that the past decade has been stockpiled with an unbelievable amount of serious family drama, you start to realize why things are the way they are, and why things probably will never be the way they used to be again. And believe me, I've tried to keep the family together. But when you have a mom who's as crazy as mine, and a little brother who acts like you don't even exist to him anymore, it's a hard thing to do. But, you know, all things aside, I'm extremely grateful to my grandmother, who's been a saint in her own right my entire life. She's always, always been there for me without fail. And even with everything that's happened, she's made the choice to remain in the lives of both my mom and my brother. She's starting to get on in years, too. Yet, she still busts her ass for this family. And because of that, more than anything, I feel like she's often taken advantage of. Admirable on her part, for sure. She's a great person. But I don't think it's necessarily fair for her. And again, what do I know? Who am I to question it? And realistically, what can I do about any of it? I've spoken my mind about all of it. About everything, many, many times. Everyone in the family knows where I stand. Problem is, we're all standing on different corners, facing different directions. You're probably wondering why I'm telling you all this, right? It's like, what's the point? This guy wears a bunny mask and hunts people. Why in the hell do we care about his life story? <laughs> hey, you showed up to the party. It's not like I forced you to come. I'm just trying to show you that the true inner me that lurks beneath this hideous skin suit is still a real person with real problems. Perhaps it sounds as if I'm contradicting myself about what I said earlier in regards to how there was never any real motivation for me to become, well, the way I am. But that's just not true. I've been the bunny for as long as I can remember. Those family problems, the way things were growing up, they may have shaped my emotional identity, but the bunny was born the day I was. And he would have existed whether things had been 100% peachy or not. He was inevitable. The skin suit is just a lie. But it is important to maintain a so-called regular lifestyle outside of Cottontail. You know, keeping up with appearances, working a steady job, paying taxes, paying bills, voting, having a modest social life, Friends, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of funny to think that everyone who's ever known me has associated me with this skin suit and not the bunny that stirs within. I'm a beautiful monster trapped inside this human prison and very few have ever known the real me. And no, I'm not saying they know what I do or know what skulks within, but in other words, I've only ever connected with a handful of people people who the bunny considers just as important as the skin suit would suggest. And that list is pretty much limited to close family members and a few select friends. But with that said, would you believe me if I told you that this old Coney was even in love once? Oh yeah. And I'm not talking preteen crush, too afraid to tell the other person how you feel love. No, I'm talking about legitimate, head over paws, kill anyone that looks at her the wrong way love. 
And oh, how perfect it was. I was an incomplete puzzle and she provided the missing piece, somehow calming the fires of my soul and taming the creature within. She saw through the skin suit, bonded with the bunny in ways no one ever had. Her and I, we were the king and queen of our own realities. And for the better part of a decade, we seemed unstoppable. And then suddenly one day, as things inevitably do, it all fell apart and I was alone again. Who can say why these things happen? They just do. People change. And because of that little fact, nothing can last forever. It's been a few years since. Matter of fact, the year of the first hunt was the year things with her ended. Maybe that was a sign that it was the right move. Freed me up to pursue my other exploits without interruption. No distractions. I'm who I'm supposed to be now. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But I'd be lying if I said she wasn't still on my mind. Matter of fact, not a day passes that I don't think of her. I just don't really know what the captain expects. I mean, we literally have nothing to work with here. And I feel like that show that he put on this morning was just fluff. Like, it literally seemed like he pounded three lines of coke. <laughs> Pleasance is a goddamn cartoon character. This frat boy relationship with the mayor makes me think everything he does is just for show. No pulp. Just fiction. Oh god, you're starting to sound like him with that lingo. Stop while you're ahead, will ya? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, what are we gonna do here, Rhodes? Like you said, we have nothing to work with. <laughs> All I can suggest is that we have our informants keep their eyes peeled until Sunday. We go to all the big clubs, all the big bars. We go to all the places we know the bad guys call home. Just in Spring Hill? Or are we reaching out here? Merritt Island, Spring Hill, and Angel City. Pleasance isn't going to like this. Pleasance told us to do what we had to do. As far as I'm concerned, that gives us free reign. I guess. Then it's settled. Have your informants ready on Merritt Island and Spring Hill, and I'll line up my informant in Angel City. You really think this is going to work? Absolutely not. But we have to try. This cottontail guy's been getting away with this shit for two years too many. You want to catch him more than you're letting on. Don't you? So bad I can almost taste it, Graham. So bad I can almost taste it. <sighs> All of this talking is kicking up my anxiety. Pop a few of these, should be fine in a few minutes. I've gotten pretty good at fighting off the panic attacks on my own, but sometimes I still need the relief. Gotta get it together. I'm heading into Angel City tonight to meet up with the Boo Brothers. I paid them a hefty sum to organize this year's hunt and to find me the perfect players. So I can't very well show up with my nerves shot now, can I? Hey, it's me. Uh, everything's good to go, so we'll see you tonight. Boom, boom, bah. Same table, same spot. And uh, don't be late. And the plans are set. I should be exploding with excitement right now, 
but a disturbingly calm stillness comes over me. Maybe it's the lorazepam. Or maybe it's all this talk of love. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the world's most melancholy madman. The perfect storm of monster and mayhem. Cottontail. The beautiful, beautiful butcher bunny in love with the idea of being in love. Angel City, here I come. The Boo Brothers, the most feared men in the city. Hell, the whole damn county for that matter. They are the criminals other criminals prefer to avoid altogether. The type of bad guys that give bad guys nightmares. Apparently they saw some crazy shit go down earlier this month during the 8-ball conflict. We're talking black magic, books of power, resurrection, the works. Their younger brother was murdered sometime during the conflict, and ever since, they've been hell-bent on tracking down one of those so-called books of power to bring him back. Sounds crazy, right? Well, when a boo brother tells you something like that, you sure as hell ain't gonna tell him he's crazy, if you catch my drift. So, uh, about those books, you guys find one yet? Don't even fucking ask, man. Well, it's uh, nice to see you bonding through this tragic experience. All right, the hunt then. I'm hoping that I've whoa, given you guys whoa, whoa, whoa. enough. We don't talk business at this table until everybody's had a drink, and you, sir, not had a fucking drink. Okay, now I have a drink. All right, now. We can talk. This looks good. Got you four this year. One from Merritt Island, one from Spring Hill Beach, two from Angel City. And this is the spot? Yep. You got it for 24 hours starting Sunday. Guys, I gotta tell you, when I asked you to surprise me with a new spot this year, I wasn't expecting you'd go this above and beyond. You really, really knocked it out of the park. Put it away, man. She's coming. Waitress is coming. Oh, um. Okay, boys. Round of cough and water shots in the house. Nice. Clyde. Tommy. All right. Jasper. None for the big guy. Sure. It's, uh, it's not really good for him. Well, then you'll just have to drink them both then. Not unless you wanted to join me. Sorry, can't. Not while I'm working. How about at the end of your shift? You just keep striking out tonight, Bumper. I got plans. I can't strike out forever. Sounds like a date. <laughs> you can count on it. How's tomorrow night sound? Got plans. Sounds like the rabbits in the blood.
the um, who who the hell is that guy? Who him? That's the, uh, the new bar manager. What the fuck's his name? Uh, Jack. John. Some John. Like that. That's his fucking John. Does he always treat her like that? We've never seen something like that before. I mean, what? You want to do something about it? Um, do you? Depends on how much you're willing to pay. Shit. Rhodes, it's Leslie. Hey. Um, I'm at the Boom Boom Bar right now. I uh, just saw Cottontail. He was here with the Boo Brothers. Um, I, I lost him. I don't know. It looked like he was flirting with one of the waitresses here. I don't. I don't know. Let me see what his, her name is here. Carmela Rossi, one of the Boom Boom girls. I say we talk to her and see if we can get a clue as to where he is. I don't know about you, but I sure as hell am not approaching the Boo Brothers about this. What was that about the Boo Brothers? Well, kids, everything seems to be going as planned. The location is booked, the players have been chosen, and the only thing left to do before the big day is finalize my new look for this year's hunt and show the Honey Bunnies their all new outfits, which they are absolutely going to love, by the way. Tomorrow is Saturday, so we have one more day until the hunt. I'd say that puts me right on schedule. It's going to be exquisite. Funny thing is, with everything going so great, I can't seem to get her off my mind. Carmela. Yeah. She sure was scrumptious. I know, I know. I met her once for like 30 seconds, right? I know. I get it. But something about her. The way she moved. The way she spoke. The way her eyes met mine every chance they got. Hmm. You know what? What time is it? Fuck it. I'm going. Carmella, need a lift? I don't know why he's like this all of a sudden. He seemed like a decent guy when we met. What was his name again? John? Yeah. He's got balls. He's stupid. He's got balls. You want to hurt him, don't you? I would like to. Are you going to? Would you like me to? I 
I don't know. How, how would you do it? I'd take my time. I'd clean his flesh from his bones and I'd leave his lavender colored skull on his mother's doorstep. What's it like for you? Killing people? It's like no rush I've ever felt. There's nothing like it. I agree. I have that craving every now and then. What do you mean? You aren't the only one who enjoys what you do, you know. Are you trying to tell me that you've killed people? You? Is it that hard to believe? Well, yeah, kind of. Why? Because I'm a woman? No, because you're so... What, wholesome? I just think that if you were a killer, you would have taken care of these problems long ago. It's just an observation. Believe me, I've thought about it. He'd be my fourth. I feel that urge coming back all over again. I'm gonna have to satisfy it sooner or later. So that's why you're so comfortable riding around with a known serial killer. Thinking about it, I don't imagine many women would get into a car with me knowing who I am. <laughs> I knew who you were the moment I saw those big ears sticking up from the Boo Brothers table all those months ago. I've been following your work for years. I was just too shy to come over and say hello. So tonight then, what's changed? It was the first time I'd seen you in the bar in quite a while. With Easter right around the corner, I figured I'd better make a splash. It's funny. I've been making the other girls serve your table ever since you first showed up. And tonight, I told them to let me have it. Always coming into the bar like you own the place. Walking with that strut you have, dressed to the nines in your fancy suits and your bunny masks. I knew I had to have you. That's all very flattering, but Carmela, you don't even know me. And yet I feel completely at ease around you. It's like I've known you for years. It was as if the hand of an angel had touched me. It was calming and warm and smooth like silk. I was so fascinated by her and even more so by the fact that she felt the same way about me. I mean, who knew? This was a 180 degree turnaround from where my thoughts were earlier tonight. She claimed to be a killer and although I played it otherwise, I knew she was telling me the truth. That luscious hair, those big, beautiful lips, those wide, glistening eyes, she was a beautiful disaster, just like me. She said she had to have me. Well, you know what? I had to have her. Tomorrow, I'd like for you to meet me at this address. It'll be the day before Easter. I'll be celebrating. I'd like for you to be there. Okay, I will. Okay. Tommy, mm -hmm. it's your friend with the big ears. Okay, everything all right? Yeah, 
<laughs> still pissed off about John. Yeah, I think the Boom Boom's gonna need a new manager. What do you think? <laughs> What the fuck is this, Clyde? This is business. Is not that broad? That whore from the bar? Oh, that's a terrible thing to say about your little girlfriend, wouldn't you say? Fuck you, Clyde. Getting rid of you won't even be considered a loss. I mean, what kind of a man treats his woman like that? The Boom Boom ain't nothing without me. You kill me, you kill the club. Bullshit. That place had plenty of managers before you, and it'll have plenty after. You're nothing special. What if I pay you? How much? I have access to 10 grand. So give me to an ATM and the shit's yours. That's not enough. What? Not enough money? Dude, just get me the fuck out of here. Oh, fuck. Is, is this all about that bitch? That woman? Let's have some fun. I didn't sleep much last night. Not because I'm worried about tomorrow's hunt or anything like that, but because my mind was filled with rushing thoughts of, well, her. What a distraction, right? I mean, her for one night, for maybe a few hours, and look at me. In the last 12 hours, I've become borderline obsessed with this woman. I mean, yes. She's a creature hiding beneath human skin just like I am. She's a beautiful disaster just like me. I know, I've said this. I get it. But come on, me? Again? Yours truly? In love with the idea of being in love but never truly believing you would ever be in love again? But here I am. I'm even having thoughts only the typical human would have. Relationship? Marriage? Big house? Three kids? A dog? Family trip? Retirement? I mean, fuck. And what's worse, the bunny agrees. And when the bunny agrees with my human element, there's no denying it. That is how I feel. I'm completely whipped and I'm not even tied down to anybody. What I need is exercise. That should get my mind right. Then again, why do I need to get my mind right? It is right, is it not? This isn't a product of my human avatar attempting to be normal. This is real. Just as it was before, why deny it? Why should I? One new message. It's Leslie. Hey, um, I'm at the Boombo Bar right now. I uh, just saw Cottontail. He was here with two brothers. Um, I, I lost him. I don't know. It looked like he was flirting with one of the waitresses here. I don't. I don't know. Let's see what his name is here. Carmela Rossi, one of the Boom Boom girls. I say we talk to her and see if we can get a clue as to where he is. I don't know about you, but I sure as hell am not approaching the Boo Brothers about this. had a few hours left until I was supposed to meet Carmela at the location I gave her. Until then, one last briefing on tomorrow's hunt with the honey bunnies. Besides, it was time to show them their new look. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, honey bunnies of all ages and sizes, welcome to the briefing party for the third annual Easter egg hunt. You'll find everything you need to know about tomorrow's hunt in your briefing packs. Times, locations, photos, and details of every player are in there. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Your new hunting party masks and costumes. And don't think I forgot about you, my good man. There's something in here for you as well. Ladies and gentlemen.
Ah, uh, yes. They love me. The honey bunnies. My people. She met me at the address I gave her, just as I'd hoped she would. The location of tomorrow's hunt. The perfect time, the perfect place to make this thing real. Whatever this thing was. That is, if anything. We walked for what seemed like hours, passing stories of our past back and forth, learning about each other, trying to gauge the potential of this possible relationship. It was fantastic. I was telling her things about me that I'd only told my ex, things that took me forever to tell her, and here I was spilling my guts to this girl I met not 24 hours prior. Madness. But you know what? The more we spoke, the more we melded. How glorious of an evening this was indeed. Questions burned in my mind. Would she die for me? Would she live for me? Would she kill for me? If she were to ask me any one of those questions, my answer for every single one would most definitely be yes. I would kill a thousand people if it guaranteed her hand in mine. <sighs> well, here goes nothing. Now before we go any farther, I've got a few questions for you, Dollface. What are you willing to do for me? Anything. Oh really? How many people are you willing to kill? All of them. Just how far into the rabbit hole are you willing to go? However far are you willing to take me? So perfect. I've got something for you. A beautiful monster deserves a beautiful face. Perfection. Have fun. Hey, handsome. Babe, babe, what, what are you doing? I, I thought you were my girl. I was never your girl. A real man doesn't treat his queen like a fucking dog. By the way, you won't be needing this one. <sighs> I'm gonna let you bleed. You tell Pleasance? Hell no. I'm not involving him yet. Not until I know for sure what is what. Can't say I blame you. And uh, you sure her name is Carmela Rossi? Don't know how it's spelled, but yeah, that's it. 
Whoa, here we go. Here she is. Carmela Rossi, female, born, 11691, brown hair, looks like she dyes it though. Brown eyes, 5'6", 116 pounds. For someone so young, she has quite the rap sheet, doesn't she? <laughs> well, damn, no wonder. Look who her older sister was. Rosaria Rossi, AKA Trix. <laughs> you mean to tell me this girl's sister is Queen Bee of the Eight Ball Gang? Jesus Christ! made my decision, and let's just say it's for the best. Um, okay. What? I'm going to Angel City alone. What? Come on, Graham. Can't you cut me some slack just this once? Can you treat me like a partner instead of some child you always constantly have to protect? I need somebody here to report back to everybody if something goes wrong. If you're my partner. But we have to split responsibilities. We're never going to be partners if you can't trust me. This is bullshit! Lisa, this is Angel City. I could be walking into a meat grinder for Christ's sake. This is for your own good. Let me guess. I'll thank you for it later, right? If something happens to me, yes. Yes, you will. You know what I think? I think you're stuck on catching this cottontail killer, and you'll do whatever it takes. Is that it, Rhodes? You're gonna sink down to some new low, and you just don't want me to see it? Keep your phone on in case I need you. I'll be in touch. As you can see, things here at the Spring Hill Beach Jetty seem perfectly normal. However, with Easter Sunday only six hours away, the people of Spring Hill Beach have already begun preparing for the return of the Cottontail Killer, a killer made infamous among locals two years ago when several Spring Hill natives were kidnapped from their homes and placed in a violent game of death, a game Cottontail aptly called the Easter Egg Hunt. This continued into last year's Easter as well, when several more Spring Hill natives were taken from their homes and placed in the game, with the number of players increased. As of now, two years later, there has been no successful victor of the hunt. All who've been forced to play have died, their skulls polished and painted and left at the homes of their families and friends. With the amount of plywood flying off shelves and the number of people changing locks and installing last minute home security systems, Spring Hill Beach is seemingly ready for the return of Cottontail. But they were all so wrong, as if I just crept into whatever house at random and stole my eggs. Come on people, give Cottontail a little bit more credit than that. This was my third annual hunt after all, and I have a reputation to live up to. I mean, I get that I've become somewhat infamous among my hometown, Spring Hill Beach. People are running scared, they're talking about calling for an emergency curfew, sundown. I get it. They know my name. They know what I do. But does the rest of Angel County know? Besides the Boo Brothers, barely anyone in Angel City knows who I am. Nobody in Merritt Island sure knows about the hunt. No. Two years in a row now, I've been overshadowed by Charlie Graves shit. Two years. Two years. Not this year. Not this time. I'm branching out. Spring Hill Beach, Merritt Island, Angel City, we're coming for you.
Graham. Yeah? I questioned everybody at the Boom Boom Room, and no one had anything to say. The Boo Brothers, conveniently, were not there. There was no sign of the rabbit. And Carmela? Not working tonight. Coworker said that she was going out with a new friend. I wonder who that could be. Right, so what now? I'm going to stake out Carmela's place tonight. I have her address. Hopefully, eventually, she'll lead me to Cottontail. And now, one more thing before tomorrow's hunt. A gift for myself. A treat. A toast, if you will, to the hopeful success of another hunt. But what is this gift, you ask? Well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. Right on schedule. Madam Zena, everything's going well, I hope. Just as beautiful as ever, I see. I know it's hard to tell, but I am blushing behind this mask. Do you have it? Took me a minute to wiggle it out of the evidence depository, but there you go. Look at this, boys and girls. Juice's bunny mask. The notorious eight ball gangster and Death's right hand man. A bunny clearly after my own heart and now it's mine. My prize, my gift. About of joy before tomorrow's glorious hunt. Madam Zena, always a pleasure. I wonder, how much do you know about the Books of Power? All there is. Hey, finally, you had me worried sick. Oh, sorry, we must have fallen asleep. Okay, well, anything on your end? I don't really know. I didn't see her come in or out. But as far as I can tell, that's her car parked in front of her place. Is the hunt going down or not? Yeah, it is. We've had two calls so far reporting missing people, all apparently snatched from their bedrooms sometime last night, and not just Spring Hill Beach. Same thing happened in Merritt Island and Angel City. Whatever Cottontail's doing, he's definitely up the scale this year. Shit. So what do you want to do? Fuck. What? Gotta go. <gasps> Hello, Carmella. Where's a grown woman like you headed with a bunny mask, I wonder? What do you want? I want to meet your boyfriend, the rabbit. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was it. The day had finally come. Easter Sunday. Cottontail's third annual Easter egg hunt. May we forever hunt in style. No, no. 
This can't be what I think it is. What the hell do you think this is? And who are these freaks? Oh yes, good morning to everyone. A grand old Easter Sunday to each and every one of you fine young creatures. It's my honor to welcome all of you to this very special event. An event open to only a select few individuals each year. Cottontail's third annual Easter egg hunt. Now, for you two Spring Hill natives, you know the drill. And I'm sending some special hometown love your way. Hometown pride, that's what I always say. For all you newcomers hailing from Merritt Island and Angel City, congratulations. You are making history as the first outsiders to ever grace the hunt. For everyone not familiar with how this works, I'm going to break it down as quickly and as simply as I can. You ready? Pay attention. Think of the Easter egg hunt as an extreme form of hide and seek, rather than a traditional Easter egg hunt you probably have pictured in your head right now. The Honey Bunnies and I, we are it. And the players, or the Easter eggs as I like to call them, are the ones required to make it to the base, so to speak. Only in this game, not making it to the base is a death sentence. And getting tagged, for lack of a better word, is the chilling touch of doom. So far, none of our players have ever survived the hunt. And I'm hoping that this year, maybe someone will. I gave them a 10 second head start before the Honey Bunnies and I entered the hunting grounds. As you can probably guess, certain chaos ensued. <laughs> oh yes, everything you know about me, everything you've learned so far, this hunt is what it's all about. Look at us, ladies and germs. Aren't we spectacular? Let's boogie, shall we? Gun asshole, or I'm gonna blow her goddamn brains out. Let her go. No. Drop your weapons and surrender now. Not gonna happen, detective. You're not the only one with leverage. What? Did you really think the Boo Brothers wouldn't notice a rat in the boom boom bar? You got sloppy, detective. And so I'm gonna propose a trade. Carmella for Leslie. You drop your weapons first, and then I'll let her go. That's not gonna happen. We'll do it at the same time. Agreed? Agreed. You see, detective, 
I can be diplomatic. But like I said, you got sloppy. Just like that, it seemed another hunt had come and gone. Only this year, I was exceedingly proud of myself. I carried out a hunt with parties from not just Spring Hill Beach, but from Angel City and Merritt Island as well. The first Easter egg to ever walk out of this hunt alive definitely happened to be from my hometown. I finally managed to get rid of that pesky detective, his mole being a bonus, of course. And to top it all off, I found Carmella, a beautiful monster to match my own. However, as far as the body of Detective Rhodes is concerned, I think I'll treat it the same as I treat any of my other corpses and send his wife a nice, big, beautiful Easter egg. Well, ladies and gentlemen, another year down and another game well played. We had a winner this year, but there's still room to celebrate. You ready to get out of here, baby? There's still something I gotta do. Well, kitties, this unfortunately marks the end of our time together. I want to thank each and every one of you for showing an interest in who I am and how I live my life. It's been a fun few days. You're cool in my book, and you're cool with the bunny that lurks within for that matter. So I guess this is goodbye, for now at least. And who knows, maybe we'll see each other again someday? Until then, keep on rocking, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's see if I can get this triumphant breakfast club fist pump right. You ready? So remember when I asked Madame Zena about the Books of Power? Well, it turns out she had one right there in her shop. The Lexicon, as she called it. One of the originals. I don't know how she got it or why nobody else on the planet didn't scope it out before I did. But if I know my stuff, this is exactly the type of book my good friends the Boo Brothers have been searching for. Pretty much paid an arm and a leg for it. Set Madame Zena up for a full year. But it was worth it. Hopefully they like it. After all the shit they've done for me, I think they deserve it, don't you? You said this is from the rabbit? Yeah, just delivered. Hope this helps your friend Cottontail. What's this thing called? Lexicon? I don't recognize that language. Probably should get a translate or something before we start reading this thing, yeah? Oh, for Christ's sakes, Jasper. What makes you think it'll even answer to us? 
guess we're gonna find out. Hey, look at this. Somebody's already translated this spell. Probably the last owner of this thing. Wonder what happened to him. Look at this. Be filled with the power of a thousand gods. What do you think? I'm down. I think this is our ticket to the fucking show. Okay. Lexicon spiratus, omnis nos evobis, dinof nobis polestis, edostis ut cadere, edosom is en queen, ex carne et inama, liberare nos ad enculisis, un fene nos at nudo ot, monster cicero nostra in vicula. It was late Monday night. I was chilling in my usual spot, burying the headless bodies from the hunt, just chilling, thinking, and enjoying the zen-like quality of the forest, when an encounter I never expected would soon take place, changing the path of my life forever. Didn't you hear? You bury your own. That's the way the Indians did it. <laughs> Interesting. And by the way, weapons like that won't work on me anymore. Besides, I come to you as a friend. People call me... The Weeper. I know who you are. <laughs> I guess my reputation exceeds me. So does yours, Cottontail. Good. So tell me, Cotton, you cut the head off that detective and sent his wife his painted, polished skull, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's my calling card. Yes, indeed it is. That's him you're burying now? As a matter of fact, it is. In fact, the contestants from every year are buried out here. Ah, oh, I know. I 
I can smell the rot buried beneath the ground. The warm scent of decomposition calms my soul. What little I have left of it, that is. Is that what I think it is? It's exactly what you think it is. The Codex, my most prized possession. Come to think of it, I do believe the Boo Brothers were after this for a decent stretch of time. To no avail, of course. As far as they knew, as far as anyone knew, you were dead and that book was lost to the world. But, here I am. Book in hand, and as alive as I'm ever going to be again. What do you want, Weeper? I want your help. I could use a man with your... talent. After seeing what you did with that gun, I'm not sure what help I'm going to be to you. There will be plenty of time to dive into the smaller details. All right, Reaper. What are you offering? Hmm. How does the prospect of eternal life sit with you? You can live eternally young and continue these Easter egg hunts of yours forever. What exactly is it we'd be doing? Tell me. Cottontail, have you ever been to hell? <laughs>